Breaking news. War in Russia is ongoing. Russian presidential elections are scheduled for March of this year. Just like previous contests, this one will be carefully orchestrated, and the result is already known. Vladimir Putin, Russia's president for over 23 years, will have a commanding lead in the campaign from the get-go. His candidacy and achievements will be lauded by every Russian media outlet. To make it look like he's up against real opponents, he'll really be facing off against government supporters. He is going to win hands down when the votes are tallied, but you should still watch the election because it will be hilarious. Putin can take this moment to lay out his goals for the next six years and, in a related vein, try out some new approaches to communicating. So, there are two primary things that analysts should anticipate from him. One is to highlight Russia's conflict with the West. On the other hand, criticizing socially liberal or woke policies is something that Westerners would recognize from their own political experiences at home. Putin will, for instance, make much of family values, stating that Russians should adhere to the old model of large, traditional families headed by a father and a mother. He plans to attack the so-called LGBT movement and label it as an international plot to destabilize Russian society. Moreover, he will fiercely oppose abortions, despite the fact that the majority of Russians are in favor of their legalization. It is not a coincidence that there are parallels with the American right. Conservative American firebrands, including Fox News hosts, have inspired Putin and his advisors to embrace their ideology and rhetoric. Because it thinks it can win over populist candidates in Washington and elsewhere by embracing the culture wars, the Kremlin has done this. Really, right-wingers around the world have already taken a shine to Russia. Putin has received acclaim from conservative leaders in the US and Europe, including the former US President, Donald Trump. When asked about their position on Ukraine's future, some have indicated they are willing to compromise. Putin's nationalism manifests in his far right speech and policies. It would appear that the president is trying to destroy Western societies from inside by supporting such movements. He probably believes he can dismantle the international order based on norms in this way. Furthermore, he likely has the desire to supplant it with a fresh, conservative international order that centers on the Kremlin, hatred's influence. Putin wasn't exactly a culture warrior when he first assumed power. Actually, the Kremlin was motivated by a moderate agenda up until 2012. Putin prioritized economic development throughout Vladislav Surkov's tenure as first deputy chief of staff. Despite his support for Putin's totalitarian regime, Surkov had no animosity against women, immigrants, or the LGBTQ community. To the contrary, he thought that Putin would have the most success appealing to the socially liberal, globally mobile middle class, however, Surkov's theory proved flawed. Even though Putin had the support of Russia's middle class initially, they eventually turned against him as his dictatorial control became more entrenched. Hundreds of thousands of middle class Russians even demonstrated in the streets in 2012 during his campaign for a third term as president, Putin was still victorious. The protests, however, caused a shift in his perspective on authority. In his anger, he decided to ignore Surkov. Putin was encouraged by conservative thinker Vyacheslav Volodin, who he appointed top political strategist, to rally the support of Russia's working class and poor, who are seen as more devout and traditionalist. Consequently, Putin started to focus more on cultural matters, criticizing the West for its purported decadence in promoting so-called traditional values, rather than the economy in the middle class, a law outlawing LGBTQ propaganda was enacted into law in 2013 at Volodin's recommendation, marking one of the earliest manifestations of this shift. In essence, the measure outlawed the portrayal of unconventional relationships in a positive light in media outlets and prohibited the portrayal of LGBT people in media that may be viewed by audiences under the age of 18. The new Putin regime stigmatized the LGBTQ community in more ways than just the law. Kremlin-controlled media also started portraying LGBTQ individuals in a negative light, suggesting that they are intrinsically evil and a threat to society. Russian state television nightly news show host Dmitry Kislyov, for instance, 
called for a ban on heart transplants from gay men who died in accidents in August 2013. He instead advocated scorching their hearts, such hate speech was shocking in Russia at the time, and Kaislyov's remarks caused quite a stir. However, Putin seems content. He appointed Kaislyov CEO of a newly established state-owned news agency he established in December 2013. The ascent of Kaislyov became a symbol of the evolving character of Russia's media. State television was uninteresting and unremarkable prior to Putin's third term. But in 2012, state broadcasters started acting like the right-wing American TV network Fox News, which is iconic for instigating uproar. Reporters were instructed to observe and imitate what they saw on the station, according to a senior ex-official of Russian state television who preferred to remain nameless due to safety concerns. Meanwhile, Kaislyov began mimicking the angrily outspoken Fox News host Bill O'Reilly. Russian news hosts couldn't care less that O'Reilly was not a fan of Putin and had even referred to the Russian president as the devil in the past. According to the ex-official, what really counted was that O'Reilly had the flames of hatred bursting from his eyes. His news shows were riveting, full of anger, confrontations, and yelling. Similarly, Kaislyov's were, there were other Russian media outlets outside the state network that lifted content from Fox News. Veteran Fox News producer Jack Hanek traveled to Russia towards the year's end 2013 to assist billionaire Konstantin Malafiev in launching Sargrad TV, a privately owned far-right channel with links to the Russian Orthodox Church. While leading Russia's invasion of eastern Ukraine in the spring of 2014, Malafiev provided funding to Igor Gherkin, who was a military commander at the time. Russian leaders are ironically not exactly exemplars of American conservatism, but then again, neither are most of their American counterparts. For example, in 2014, Putin filed for a divorce from his wife. Former Olympic rhythmic gymnastics champion Alina Kabaeva seems to have been Putin's partner since at least 2008, however he has not remarried. The general public believes that they are parents, divorce is a common legal status among Putin's associates. After divorcing his first wife in 2011, Deputy Prime Minister Igor II filed for a second divorce in 2017. Divorced in 2014 was Sergei Sabayanin, the mayor of Moscow. A prominent Russian billionaire and close friend of Putin's, Arkady Rotenberg, filed for divorce in 2013. In Soviet times, the divorces would have hurt the men's jobs because the Communist Party was strongly against them. However, today, distance is of the utmost importance. When it comes to divorce, Russia has been at the top for a long time. At 3.9 per 1,000 people, it has one of the world's highest divorce rates, significantly higher than the world average of 1.8. Standard American rates are 2.5, anxieties and hatred, the boundaries of Russia are not the endpoint of Putin's culture war. As an example, Russian politicians and propagandists started lamenting the flood of refugees and migrants into Europe in the 2010s, saying that the continent had been spiritually and culturally lost due to the inflow of individuals from Africa and Latin America. Many Euro-Atlantic countries have actually gone down the path of abandoning their roots, including Christian values that form the basis of Western civilization, Putin claimed in a 2013 speech delivered by the Russian president. French languages and foreign cultural elements into their societies have not been integrated, he claimed, referring to Europe, the Kremlin has also entered American politics. In 2020, when the BLM movement gained momentum, the Kremlin claimed it was a disaster for America. The American elites themselves undermine the statehood of their country, wrote Russia's Security Council Secretary Nikolai Patrushev. They further their own goals by capitalizing on street movements. They tease outcasts who shoplift under virtuous guises. Where whites are forbidden to enter. And local gangs will take over the police functions were even suggestions made by Patrushev regarding American locations. The right-wing media figure and former Fox News analyst Tucker Carlson could have penned such comments with ease. Naturally, Ukraine has been a focal point of Moscow's anti-woke tirades. 
During a speech commemorating Russia's unlawful takeover of four areas in Ukraine in 2022, Putin made a solemn pledge that Russia will fight to save our children and our grandchildren against sexual deviation and Satanism. Some see Russia's actions as a defensive tradition, while others see Kiev as a vehicle for the West to expand its corrupt liberal ideas into Russia's natural region of influence. The goal is to guarantee that every child in Russia has a mom and dad, rather than what Putin termed parent number one, parent number two, and parent number three in September 2022, transgender persons, who are seen as the parent number one, parent number two, and parent number three by the Kremlin, constitute a particularly daunting threat. Consequently, they are currently subject to laws that are exceedingly restrictive.